My name is Perry Douglas Van Dorn. I was born in Oak Creek, Colorado, Rock County, of course. July 16th, 1916, and at that time, Oak Creek was a pretty tough mining town. They just had had a big strike up there, and they called in the National Guard, and they couldn't handle it, so they finally sent in federal troops and got the strike settled. I don't, I don't know exactly how they settled it, but they did. And about three weeks after that, I came, my mother brought me down to Craig, and I've lived here ever since. The day this picture behind me was taken, it was in August of 1918. It was a eclipse of the sun. And why we went up on top of the sand rocks to see it, I don't know, but we did. But before we went up, we would smoke some pieces of broken glass to look at the eclipse through. They say that's a no-no now, but that's all we had, so that's what we did. We smoked them over the lamp chimneys and got them as dark as we could. One thing that I remember about that day was as we rolled up the left side of the sand rocks, somebody was helping Mother climb up the hill and somebody else was pushing her from behind. And I always wondered why, why that was, but she told me many years later that was just before my younger brother was born on the 19th of September, 1918. So that somehow made an impression on me. Well, to go back a little bit, when my dad first came to Craig, he came with his father to build a bank building down on the northeast corner of Yamp Avenue and Victory Way. And that's at that time he they said that he needed some new shoes, so he went over to the J.W. Hugo store and bought a piece of pair of shoes, and that's where I met my mother. One thing that I remember when we still living up in this house at. Uh, one of my cousins, Aaron Parfit, came to stay with us, with Bob and I, and we all three slept in one bed. We got to giggling. I don't know what it was about anymore, but we got to giggling. Dad told us to hush up and go to sleep. Well, we didn't do it. We just kept on giggling and, I suppose, poking one another, whatever boys do that way. And Dad didn't say any more, but he just got up and, they always kept a strap off of a harness line about that long, and they kept it hanging on the end of the cupboard in the kitchen. He just went out and picked up that strap, and here he came. He'd come over to the bed where we were, and we, he jerked the covers back, and I happened to be sleeping, sleeping on the front of the bed, so he grabbed me first and whacked me with that strap several times, and then he grabbed Aaron and Whacked him, I never did think he had dropped him quite as many times as he did me, but then he reached over to the back of the bed and did Bob about the same way, but I don't think he ever had struck him as many times as he did me. I always thought I got the worst of it, but maybe it's just because I was first, I don't know, but <laughs> that's kind of the way they they were. They didn't uh, tell you too many times. And I had a bad habit of getting mad and at the supper table and plopping my head down on my arm. And 
just sitting there pouting, I guess. Finally, one night they told me that if that ever happened again, why I was going to eat my supper in the kitchen by myself. Well, a night or two later, it happened, and Mother told me later that she just looked over at Dad, and he nodded, and she just reached over and got my plate and took it out to the kitchen and didn't say a word about it. When I looked up, well, there was no plate in front of me. I knew what I had to do. I went to the kitchen and ate my supper. They were always wanted us to clean our plates. They didn't necessarily say how much we had to eat or what we had to eat, but if we took it, we were supposed to eat it. And if we had any dessert, well then, if you cleaned your plates, you got some dessert. But until you did, you didn't get it any. That's uh, kind of the way they, they operated. And, uh, well, always had good meals, we always had them on time. We was all expected to be there and sit down at the table to eat our supper. And when you got through, you asked to be excused from the table. And if you didn't, you were reminded of it and told to come back and sit down and ask to be excused. And it was always granted, but then it was just something that they thought was necessary and very much different than today. It's a kind of a dirty story, but that's what we did. The town kids had, uh, they'd like to make mud pies, so we went in Ask mother, my sister and I asked her, went in one day and asked my mother if we could have some water to make some mud pies with. She said no because they had to haul all their water. And so we uh, went out to the north side of the house and proceeded to make our own water and we made some mud pies. Well, when mother found out about it, she disapproved of that very strongly. <laughs> she didn't. Give us a paddle, but she let us know that that wasn't the thing to do. <laughs> oh, well, there was Peter Aaron Van Dorn and his wife, Mary Ambrosia Beardshear, and uh, Robert Vandalia Bryan and his wife, Lucy Ann Goodwin. I just thought of a story about, it, about him that uh, might be kind of interesting. Grandfather Brian, was, his folks always told him that he was born in 1855 in Illinois, but he was back there in Arkansas and, uh, for a visit one time and found the old family Bible that uh, said he was born in 1853. But his folks falsified his records to try to keep him out of the Civil War. Well, as it turned out, he wouldn't have been old enough to go anyway, but that's what they did. But uh, at some time, they moved to Illinois, and uh, during the presidential campaign in 1860, when Abraham Lincoln was running for president, why? Gramp saw him somewhere, and I suppose listened to his speech. And he was six years old at the time, and 